Are you struggling with developing your hypotheses or determining what your null hypothesis is? In this video, I'm going to talk about a hypothesis versus a null hypothesis, what they are and how they differ, and then how you actually need to use them within creating your statistical test for your research data. Hi, and welcome to my channel. If you don't know me, I am Dr. Elena Reister. I have my PhD in chemistry and I make videos on this channel to help you complete your research with less effort. In today's video, we're going to talk about the hypothesis versus the null hypothesis. If you're struggling with what a hypothesis is, it is basically an educated guess. So once you have a research question, you can come up with your best educated guess as your answer to the research question and that essentially makes up your hypothesis for what you want to study. If you want more in-depth information on the, a research question versus a hypothesis, check out the video above that dives into that topic. But in this topic, we really want to talk about the hypothesis versus the null hypothesis. And so once you have your educated guess on what you're going to learn in the study you're going to perform, that becomes your hypothesis, and then you want to form your null hypothesis. And really simply, a null hypothesis is just the opposite of your hypothesis. So generally in your hypothesis, you're going to say that some difference existed, whether it was something was increased or decreased, or a correlation existed, or something to that effect. You're going to determine that one thing happened. In your null hypothesis, it's just saying that that thing did not happen. So if you're going to say that this group is significantly different from this group in your hypothesis, your null hypothesis is that that group is not significantly different from this group. For one of our published papers, our hypothesis was that moms eating a high fat diet would have increased lipids in their blood and placentas. And so this is our best guess. We were comparing two groups and we were interested in the question of how does a high fat diet affect the maternal circulation and reproductive function. And so our best guess is that if you're gonna eat more fats, you're probably going to have higher fats in your blood and as a result, those higher fats are going to be able to get into the placenta, which could affect the fetus. So when we're going to run our statistical test, we need to know what the null hypothesis is. And essentially, our null hypothesis is that moms who eat a high fat diet do not have more lipids in their blood and placentas. So this means that moms that eat a normal diet versus a high fat diet are not actually different from each other. A null hypothesis and a hypothesis is really important for when you're doing statistical tests. It's important for creating a research plan and a research proposal so that you really know what you're researching. But the most important part is for your statistical test because a statistical test is directly testing a hypothesis. And so a lot of times we'll think about, oh, you run a t-test to tell if two groups are significant. But if you don't know the hypothesis that you are using, that t-test can almost become meaningless because just because two groups are significant, you don't know exactly what that means. And I've seen this happen a lot with oddly worded statistical questions, usually like problem sets in my classes. So in our case, we're testing if moms with a high fat diet are have more lipids than moms with a low fat diet. So we want to create a statistical test that is going to tell us if the lipids in the blood of moms with a high fat diet is significantly different than the lipids in the blood of a mom with a normal diet. In this case, we would probably just perform a t-test that would compare these two. So what a t-test is going to give you is a p-value and this p-value is the proportion or the percentage that your hypothesis is true not by random chance. So that might sound really confusing but let's do it as an example. So let's say in my hypothesis testing of moms with high fat versus normal diet I get a p-value of 0.05. So what that means is there's a 95% chance that moms with a high fat diet actually have a higher lipid content in their blood 
than moms with a normal diet. And the remaining 5% chance that that's not true is that the data just shows that by random chance. That randomly all the moms that had a high fat diet just happened to be higher than all the moms that had a low fat diet. But if you had a better, if you sampled all the moms that had this diet, then it wouldn't actually be different. So that's what our statistics are telling us. So this is why we need to have that hypothesis and null hypothesis so we can actually be able to say what are we testing to be true and then if it's not true at our confidence level then our null hypothesis is true. If we tested the lipid content and got a p-value of 0.1 and we were saying that we wanted our confidence level to be 95 percent then that would mean that our null hypothesis becomes true. This would mean that the high lipid diet moms do, are not significantly different or do not differ from the normal diet moms, which is our null hypothesis. So just to kind of clarify and conclude that again, it's basically your p-value is letting you know the percentage chance that your original hypothesis is in fact true versus the chance that your null hypothesis is actually true and the hypothesis just looks true based on random chance. If you need help getting started on your research, figuring out what your ideas are and how you're gonna move your research forward, I highly suggest getting my 30-day research jumpstart guide. It's gonna help you develop your experimental designs, create your hypotheses, and then also being able to run these statistical tests on them as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.